Our next guest is an alternative pop artist who has had her music featured on a lot of popular television shows that you probably have seen, Riverdale, Handmaid's Tale, and The Hills. And she just hit over a million streams on Spotify. She has an EP called Technicolor Dreams that just came out. Belle Saint is here. Hi. Hey. Thank you for coming in. Look at that list of things. That's some accomplishments, girl. Thank you. Thank you so much. What does it mean to you to have, I mean, a girl from East Texas comes to L.A. and has accomplishments like that? What does that feel like for you? Thank you. I mean, it's very... Uh, exciting, you know, it's it's been a, a challenging but exciting journey, you know, and I'm just so grateful for the enthusiastic response and the different, you know, all the spo exposure from the TV shows and right. yeah, I'm really grateful. Are you a TV fan? Like, are you TV watcher? Oh yeah, I'm like a Netflix Hulu binger. binger. <laughs> yes, <laughs> who is it? Yeah. What do you watch? I just want to know, what are you watching? Oh man, right now, right now, you know, I've never seen Crazy Ex-Girlfriend and I'm just now getting into that and I'm obsessed with it. Rachel Bloom is hilarious. That's awesome. and I, yeah. So, okay, so my question is when you write, I mean, obviously when you write for your own record, your own album, it's one thing, but then how does the process happen when you write for TV shows? I mean, is it, do you know what the TV show is and then you feel it and write it or do you just submit whatever? It's, it's kind of happened both ways. There have been songs that I've written where you kind of, um, there's, there's fewer lyrics and it's all about kind of creating this like canvas of emotion. Mm -hmm. Like if it's kind of a more dark TV show, like you still want it to resonate with you as an artist and be authentic, but it's still kind of more about like, how can we create an emotional canvas for something that would work for this TV show right. or this movie and, right. um, yeah. Right. So um, when you're creating that canvas, I mean, what does that look like when it becomes for your own, when it's not for a TV show? Yeah. Is it easier? Is it harder? Ooh, I guess it depends. I think it might be, I think it might be easier when I'm just writing for myself, because mm -hmm. I can just kind of, there are certain songs where I'm like, this is just for me, this is for my artistry, this is what I want to say, I want to have this on my album, this is the message I want to get across. And, um, and uh, yeah, so I guess it'd be a, a little more easy mm -hmm. kind of doing that without parameters. Tell me about the album. So it just came out, mm -hmm. congratulations on that. Thank you. Okay, Technicolor Dream, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, tell me about the, feel of it. What do you want people to be listening for? What do you mm. want them to walk away with when they hear that music? Yeah, I really want people to feel empowered by it. And I want people to, um, I definitely drew a lot from my inspirations of like growing up with like Nancy Sinatra, and Johnny Cash, Dolly Parton. So there's definitely kind of a, a nostalgic feeling towards that kind of music. But then there's also kind of a modern twist because I talk about female empowerment and even a song kind of tied in with the Me Too movement. Um, but yeah, I would say empowerment would be what I want people to feel when they listen to it. And what does it mean for you to have other kind of really established artists? I mean, I saw some photos <laughs> with you and some people that we would know. Um, what, is it, what does that mean for you when they kind of embrace your vibe and embrace your artistry and, and want you to be, didn't, didn't one of them want you to help them write some things? Yeah, I, I got to go to London and work with Natalie Ambrulia on Who we love. some music. Oh yeah, I'm obsessed with her. Yeah. And she's everything I dreamed and wanted her to be. She's right. amazing. Um, yeah, it's always, um, you know, really flattering and it's good affirmation. You know, we're artists, we're insecure. And so when sure. somebody with more success comes alongside and says, love what you're doing, I want to work with you, it's always, um, you know, it's it's uh, exciting. Is it is it easier for you to write for other people? I always wonder about that. Like you're gonna so you're gonna so Natalie Imbruglia, name drop. <laughs> sorry. Like you want to go and like she wants you to help write for her, right? Mm -hmm. So you do that. Is that more intimidating, or do you like the kind of anonymity that gives you to be behind the scenes there? That's a good question. I would say I I I actually like writing for other people more interesting because then well I guess I would say that's easier for me because mm -hmm. then you're not putting yourself out there as much you know mm -hmm. you can kind of be as vulnerable as you want and someone else is gonna sing it <laughs> right somebody so else has to sound yeah. up there right so there's kind of 
not that there's pressure off, but yeah, I guess there is kind of pressure off because you're not the one being vulnerable. I right. Guess. Right. <laughs> um, I, and then the last thing I want to ask you. So we're gonna hear we're gonna hear you sing in a second. I'm very excited for that. But before I do that, you said you're from Kate. East Texas, where? Katie, yeah, Texas, uh, right? Tyler, Texas. Tyler, Texas. Yeah. Tyler, Texas. Okay. And you live in LA now. Mm -hmm. What is the weirdest thing that you do in LA that your your family and friends in Texas would be like, girl, <laughs> what are you doing? Man, the weirdest thing. Ooh, that's that's difficult. Do you do any very LA thing? The very L I mean, I guess the the focus on social media, oh, yeah. like how much time I spend, you know, curating my social media and editing, putting on a certain filter. What's your wait? Wait, what do you wait? What filters are you using? Tell me. I actually use an eight millimeter app, and there's like oh. a '60s filter that cool. adds a little grain, and I'm obsessed with it. And so I think my parents or my family in general would think <laughs> it's a little weird how much time I spend on. <laughs> Like on my that. social media, I guess. And also probably that you have famous friends now. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably a lot for them to take in. Perfect. All right, so we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, Bell 